Hey guys, it's Ra. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm homesick today with the flu. <clears throat> and I just put a little makeup on to try to look a little less gray. But I feel like I just put lipstick on a pig. So bear with me. But I got a really, really good question. I actually got two questions. Depending on how long the first one takes to answer, I might do the second one. Or I might just save it for a live or another video. So let's start with this one. This, um... And just by the way, you guys, every time I get a question, I ask the person if they mind if I answer it on a video. And, and of course, I always keep it anonymous. So I'm not just like airing people's dirty laundry. She gave me permission to, um, to answer this on a video because I think it's something that we can all learn from. And then when I got, after I got this question, I got a message from um, an SPWF friend who has a friend who's going through the same thing. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it could help a lot of people, not just one person if I answer it privately in email. Those are the questions that I saved to do for videos. So she said, good evening. I know it's late, but I'm thinking that my fiance is too dependent on his older sister. He's been in prison for 16 years and his older sister is the only family member who's been consistently there for him. All of his family loves him, but she calls it says she calls him every day, but I think she meant he calls her every day, helps him with his case, and puts money on his books. I'm an MWI, which means they met while he was already incarcerated, and came into his life a few months ago. So he's telling me about this amazing relationship that he has with his sister, and I'm just thankful that someone has been there for him because some prisoners don't have anybody at all. But I'm starting to notice some red flags about their relationship. The sister's phone was off and she was having phone issues. So from Christmas until today, he was not able to speak with her. But she would relay messages to him through me and his younger sister. During this time, him and his sister were not able to talk on the phone. He was going crazy. He said that he was depressed because he felt abandoned. He didn't think he would ever talk to her again. He said he had to prepare to cut her out of his life. He was just doing random things to get his sister off his mind. During this whole time, I was explaining to him that his sister was doing fine and and she just had some phone issues, but he wasn't hearing it. He was convinced that she abandoned him. I understood, I understand he has aban abandonment issues, but it's not healthy to become undone over not hearing from someone for just a few weeks because she had things going on. And he even told me that he didn't want me getting close to his sister because she was toxic. So if she's a toxic person, why is he so dependent upon her? Do you think it's easier for people incarcerated to have dependency issues? After all, they are forced into a situation, they are forced into a situation that forces them to rely heavily upon their relationships with the outside world. So I understand. But when that person becomes too dependent, it's unhealthy. How do you encourage independence to someone who's been forced to depend on others for 16 years to survive? What if doing this drives a wedge between them? I don't want him to stop, to stop talking to her. I just don't want him to be depressed when they can't talk. Or maybe I'm just overthinking. Thank you in advance. Okay, so I do have experience with this. I had something very similar happen to me, but it wasn't with a family member. Adam's an only child. But it was a, with a very good friend that he had for many, many years before I came back into his life. So he was gone for 10 years, for, well, I guess it was nine years before I came back in. And when he left, when he went away, when he got in trouble, the feds came in and they threatened everybody in his life, his parents, they threatened his mom and his dad separately, his father's wife. They threatened all of his friends and a few of his friends cooperated and put in statements against him. So he lost almost everybody in his life, whether it be because they were threatened and they were scared to talk to him or because they put statements in against him to save themselves. And so out of guilt, they left. He had nobody for a really long time, just like you said. And he met this woman who was solely a friend. She was married at the time. Um, and they, she did so much for him. They spoke every day. She tried to put in his appeals for him, like literally couldn't get the appeal in on time if she sent it through mail. So she literally flew somewhere 
and or maybe she drove a few hours and delivered it like literally on foot to help him so he developed this very very strong bond with her when i came into his life she got jealous and it's understandable but he still had this such a strong bond with her that he couldn't see that um from his eyes she wanted more he didn't want more he didn't see that she wanted more with him so it was this weird struggle it was like this triangle okay so he didn't want to sever that relationship with her to give up that relationship with her because just like you said anybody who's incarcerated has experienced abandonment abandonment i can't say that word ever abandonment Ooh, it's a hard one to say at some point or another usually at some point in their youth or prior to the incarceration but even if not during the incarceration they will lose people they are all faced with abandonment abandonment issues i will learn how to say that just like i will learn how to say self-conscious at some point of course it came out right that time anyway so <coughs> what you're experiencing with him and his sister is very common and you have to remember you're an MWI and I do not want this to come across insulting because I'm an RWI, meaning I rekindled my relationship, but it's a very similar type of relationship, right? So we came back after all of this time. They're so used to losing people that they don't want the other shoe to drop because if he lose it in his head, if it doesn't work out with you, okay, and you can't blame him for thinking like that, you can't blame him for feeling like that, those are his insecurities, if it doesn't work out with you, and he loses his sister, then he's back to having nothing, and nobody, and there is nothing worse than having nobody in your life, as a human being, I mean, that's human nature, that we need to feel loved, and have people in our lives, so he's holding on to her so tight, because God forbid he loses her and then eventually you're like, I can't do this anymore, I'm done, then he's got nothing. So one, there is the severe abandonment issues and two, it's still fresh for you guys. You're still new to him and no matter what, I've had this conversation with Adam plenty of times before, they're always waiting for you to leave. In fact, he had to have a talk with himself a little while later. First of all, he's like, it's only something that time will tell. Time will prove to me that you're not going anywhere because everybody else has left in my life. And like, why would you stay? But also he said for so long when people will be like, wow, she's so wonderful. I'm so happy for you. He's like, yeah, I'm just waiting for her to figure out what it's really like so she could leave. And so he said it took like months and months and months and people pointing out to him, you always talk about the words you use and the things you say and what you're putting out there. Yet, I know you're saying it as a joke, but you're still putting that out there. And that's because that was deeply ingrained in there. And they're so used to that, that it was almost like he was cushioning himself for it. He was bracing himself for the worst thing to happen. And so even though it might come across as insulting to you, you have to take a step out of your own shoes, look at it from the outside in and understand why he would feel like that. So let me just make sure that I'm answering your question. That's the background. It has happened to me. Oh, and it wound up with Adam with that woman. He, she wound up doing some kind of shady stuff and talking crap about me to him. And he asked, he sent me an email. And he's like, why would she do that? Playing Dom. And I was like, well, she would be doing that because she's jealous and she wanted more with you then uh, you'll give her. And so I came into the picture, and I know this isn't the case with your, his sister, obviously, but I came, I just wanna give you, finish the story out for you. So I came into the picture and she got jealous and it was like competitive. And so I don't care if you're still friends with her because I don't feel threatened, but I just don't appreciate her talking badly about me. And their relationship, I think maybe they'll communicate like once a year, but it's not like it used to be. Um, and so, because his eyes were opened and I've been around for so long that I mean it's not it's not that you have to choose friends over um over a relationship but I'm just saying it he was able to let that go a little bit because it wasn't healthy for him anymore her friendship was kind of um conditional if that makes sense so okay do you think it's easier for people to have dependent who are incarcerated to have dependency issues of course it is because they have to, like they, the, it's not a dependency issue. They literally have to depend on somebody or they won't have, they'll have their needs met as far as three meals a day 
and a place to sleep and shelter. Okay, so they'll have those and, and, and clothing, but they won't have their other needs met as far as anything else, like being able to communicate with the outside world, um, eating healthy food that's not served in the commissary, that kind of stuff. And I do have a video that I'll post somewhere in here about exactly how much it costs for um, inmates to purchase anything on the inside. And I'm treading and I'm treading cautiously and I'm choosing my words very carefully because I don't want it to come across like I feel like they need all of this extra stuff, but they do need to depend on other people to um, get stuff they need, to have kind of one foot into the outside world to help them reassimilate after when they come home. So yeah, they, they do have dependency issues, but they kind of have to have dependency issues. Um, so how do you encourage independence so someone who's been forced to depend on others for 16 years um, can survive? So I think that you just need to point these things out. Like I think that what he's experiencing as far as, oh my God, I have to prepare for her to be gone. That's part of him being institutionalized. It's part of that PTSD that comes along with being incarcerated. I think you said, yeah, he's been gone for 16 years. He's been gone a long time. So they develop little quirks. Um, I have a video also that I made on Christmas about the quirk, some of the quirks that Adam's developed and I'll post it in here because it's very, very, very common for everybody inside, especially the longer you're there, to develop um, quirks, to become institutionalized. So I think for him, a lot of his PTSD is coming out as the worst thing possible happened because we know in reality her phone's shut off. We know in reality she's just struggling a little bit right now. But to him, he has to prepare himself for the absolute worst so she's never going to speak to him again because um, the worst thing happened. It's just like a lot of times our members say when they don't answer the phone because they're busy or something, automatically their guy thinks that they got into an accident and died because their minds are just prepared for the worst because they're they have zero control over ever anything when they're in there. It's not like they can just pick up the phone and repeatedly call you. It's not like they can go to your house and check on you. It's not like they can even call somebody else or send somebody else to your house to go check on you. It's really hard for them because their hands are so tied. They're so con confined and restricted in their lives. So they develop these little quirks and these little things that um, these tendencies. So with him, I think it's coming out in his relationship with his sister. In other people's relationships, it comes out as a controlling relationship with their spouse or their significant other. You know, in others, it comes out in anger and in sort of hatred towards her and, and these horrible things because, that he says to her because he's jealous that he's stuck in there and he doesn't have that control and he can't be out there doing those things with her. So it just depends on how... Um, it affects them and how it'll, they'll allow it to affect them. In my video, I was talking about how he mine, it, it, he gets caught up in these fantasies, for lack of a better word, and, you know, I'm going to get out by this date, and it's going to be over by then, and um, it's his hope and how he holds on to it. But for me, it was like this emotional roller coaster that was getting really difficult for me to stay on because it was these really, really high highs when good things would happen, and then it would all come crashing down and it was these really depressive low lows because they didn't happen in the time frame that he was convinced in his mind that it was going to happen. And I felt like, you know that song, like I feel like a paper bag blowing through the wind. I just felt like I was being pulled in so many different directions because I was getting tripped up and caught up in these, um, these institutionalized fantasies with him. So um, I think that you just to help him start pointing it out to him, you know, listen, Yes, I totally understand that that's the worst that could happen, but your sister is fine. She'll answer the phone, and it's one of those, like, every time it happens, you just have to, just like a baby, just kind of reassure him, look, she's here, she's fine, she answered the phone, uh, so the next time it happens, she's here, she's fine, she answered the phone. Maybe it's a conversation him and his sister need to have. Maybe they need to... Um, put everything on the table why they feel like that. And the other thing that just popped into my mind is I don't know how much you know as an MWI about their background. Maybe together those two siblings went through something really, really, really traumatic. And so they've developed a, a very tight sibling bond that they feel like they need to be there for each other in that sense. Maybe they had abusive parents. Maybe they went through some trauma 
together or maybe everybody, all of their siblings went through trauma, but together they developed their coping skills codependently. I'm not saying that that's healthy. That could be another reason why he's so dependent upon her. And it seems like she might be back to him. It could be a reason for their tight, tight, tight knit, knit relationship. So I think it just comes with some coaching. Like you just need to talk through it with him and ask him, hey, what, what happened with you guys? How, how, why are you guys so close? And the other ones aren't. What is it about your relationship with her? What was it about your childhood that made you guys so, so close? What is it about when you don't hear from her? What are your fears that are coming up? What do you think? Why do you think the worst thing happened? And then just kind of um, dissect it that way and see how you can talk through it with him and open his eyes to the fact that she's not going anywhere. And even if she does slowly start to slowly lessen her communication with him you're there as well not that you're there taking her place by no means would I ever say that but you're there to supplement if she kind of falls off and the whole family should be there it shouldn't be one or the other but um I think that as far as how to encourage him to not be so dependent on her I think it's just going to take you conversations and a lot of just a lot of time and a lot of work and um allowing them to work through that together as well because you don't ever want to come across as jealous of their relationship or as wanting more time with him than her, unless you are. And then, so that's something that you would have to kind of work through within yourself. Like I know women who've come back into, who've come into relationships and they get very jealous of the phone minutes that they spend on the phone with their family versus on the phone with this new relationship or they get very jealous when he spends visits with the family and the siblings instead of spending every single visit that he has with her or communications emails letters and my response has always been in in my relationships i i've always felt i'd rather share those minutes with other people it doesn't make me feel neglected i'm very secure in my womanhood i'm very secure in my relationship that i'd rather him have those real communications and those real interactions with other people because when he comes out here that's going to help break that institutionalization because I don't want him 100% dependent on me that's not going to help him integrate back into society I also want him to live as normal of a life as he possibly can and who out here do you know only talks to one person their significant other and to me that constantly I'm not saying that this is you I'm just thinking through situations that I've been through and members that I've helped. This could help other people who are experiencing this. Or if you feel like you're the one who, you being everybody, not you, the person that asked this question, but if you feel like, oh, he can't talk to anybody else and he better use all of his minutes on me, well, just know that you're kind of setting himself, him up, yourself up and your relationship up for maybe not failure, but for codependency in the future and then it's just, it's not going to be healthy. Allow him to cultivate relationships with other people. Be secure enough within yourself and within your relationship for him to be able to talk to other people. You don't need to spend every single minute of those 300 minutes on the phone with him. He, if he has other people that he needs, like parents or siblings or close, close, close friends that he needs to speak to. Now, I'm not saying he should be spending 290 minutes of the phone time on other people and only 10 minutes on you. That's a little silly. But... Be okay with, be confident enough and be secure enough that he can he can share those minutes with other people or those emails or those visits with other people and you will be just as important in his life as you are if he spends all 300 minutes in every visit with you. And if you're jealous or you feel like absolutely not, he needs to spend everything on me, then I need you to do some soul searching and figure out where that insecurity lies. Figure out why you need him 100% dependent on you. Why you need him 100% to make you the center of his world. Why are you so insecure in yourself and your relationship that you can't let go and allow him to speak to other people? I know those minutes are precious and I know that time with him is precious, but it's also okay to skip or to share him with other, skip, I mean skip visit so somebody else can go, skip a phone call so somebody else can get one, or to share him with other people. Because when he comes out, it's not gonna be normal or healthy, like you're gonna have to go to work, he's gonna have to go to work. You're gonna have to communicate with other people, he's gonna have to communicate with other people. You're gonna have to integrate family back into your lives, you're gonna have to integrate children into your lives if you have them or want to have them. 
So just having just you and each other knowing how to only communicate with each other, that's not going to be healthy and he's not going to be able to, he's already going to be coming out with strikes against him because of being um, a little bit mentally retarded, a little bit mentally uh, slowed down and back a few years because of the abnormalcy of where he's lived and the confines and the restrictions and everything that he's gone through for all the years that he's been inside. So he might be a little bit socially inept anyway. So by you only allowing him to talk to just you and nobody else, he's going to be that much more socially inept. So I hope that helps. Um, and believe me, that wasn't towards you because I know that you're brand new to this and I know that you were asking me just about their um, their communication. And that, that whole lecture wasn't towards you. It's just what came up as I was speaking because I know we have a lot of other members who do experience that and so sometimes things come up and I want to say them because I know that it could help other people and I know that they're coming up for a reason to, to help whoever they need to help. So you guys, I'm going to stop there because this turned into a 20 minute video. So I will answer the other question that I got um, later or on a live video. So look out for that and anything else that we have going on in the future. Don't forget, if you want more of me, more of my volunteers, extra videos, extra downloadable documents, extra um, fun interactions, life coaching with me monthly, messaging me directly to my phone, check out our Patreon, um, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, I don't know, I'll put the link in the video. Um, go follow us over there, we're having so much fun, we have a lot of people signed up for it. Um, and I think that's it. For announcements, you guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one.